Hello guys and welcome to Top Channel 101. Today we're going to be looking at how to make this rope effect. It's a rope made up of different strands and threads. You can see the level of detail. We have the larger rope, the overall rope, and then we have these winding strands that are made up of threads. You can even actually make it even more detailed by making even the smallest strands or threads be made out of other threads by just duplicating a copy of a group node that I'll show you how to create in this lecture. This is a new lecture in my Mastering Geometry Nodes course that is also now available on Blender Market. So you can get it on Udemy or you can get it on the Blender Market. All links are going to be in the description. If you just want to examine the project file, you can download that on my Patreon page. But if you get the course, you'll get the project file and the lectures as well. So let's jump right into it. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to create these strands or these threads and ropes in geometry nodes. You can see that we have different levels of uh, threads. We have uh, the small threads, the single threads turning into uh, larger ones and then those large ones combined to make even a bigger one. You can make this turn into any shape you want. You can see here we're making a heart and I think it's uh, quite detailed. So let's take a look at how we can set that up. Okay, so we're going to start with a curve. So shift A and a curve, and uh, you can shape it in any way you want. I'm just going to make something random that flows just like that. And I can go to geometry nodes and start setting up. You can take a look at the original project file. The way I've created this project is going to be a bit different from the others. I'm using a lot of node groups uh, since these strands are made out of different strands. I have this node group that generates a single strand and uh, I'm reusing it to combine the old strand into a larger strand and then again into a larger strand uh, to make what we have. And uh, if you just take a look at uh, this strand at uh, the first generation, so we basically start with the original curve and then turn it into a series of strands like this. And uh, you can follow how, how we build up each strand by turning on this show and just to, to follow one single, single strand and you can even change the strand you're looking at. I uh, can see the progression uh, that is happening. So here we just make it just go around, screw around the curve. And then here I'm adding some displacement and uh, um, generating a second level of strands on top of that. Remember, we have several strands. So here we have like uh, seven strands or threads uh, that we are generating more strands on. Now, actually, if I just show one, you can see the different ones we have. Uh, basically, combining them to make this. Uh, let me turn this off to make this longer strand. We're just generating a small strand and then winding it up to make a, a larger strand and then winding that up to make another one. And again, if you follow uh, the, these strands, you can even start from here. So this is the larger one. And I, you can see up close, they are winding up to make the others. And uh, we're just building and uh, winding them up to make larger ones. So this is one of those branches now you can switch to another one if you want to see how that looks and uh, then we have the next level and then uh, the last level you can even if you want you can even build upon that and make another strand uh, to make this so i added all this functionality just to show you how uh, you could set up something like that and now you can see now we have the overall one. So let's build this node group and uh, I'll show you how we, we can set up everything else. So this is our original curve. Now we start with converting this to a mesh. That way we can create the first level of strands. And uh, if you use a curve circle, this would be the first strand. But, but if you want this to have multiple strands, you can make this curve. Uh, this is our profile. If you make it out of smaller curves by instancing on points and just instancing other smaller curves, let's use about four. And let's also reduce the resolution on this. I scale this down. 
as increase the resolution so that this is a circle. If this is made out of several curves like that, we can connect this as the profile and it will give you an error because it's expecting a curve, but we are feeding it instances. So we can realize this and now it should work. So if we preview this, you can see how this is turning into several strands and we can wind it by using a set curve tilt and now we can rotate these around, uh, but uh, we can use the spline length uh, using the parameter, spline parameter, and connect the factor as the tilt. This will tilt the curve depending on the, on the factor. So I can use a math node, change this to multiply, and basically wind this as many times as I want. Now, if you see that it's starting to look a bit weird, like squishing in the middle there, that usually means that you don't have enough points in the middle. So we can use a resample curve and just increase the points. And you can see now it starts to look a little bit better. You can see how we can create a strand with different uh, threads. We just need a curve to mesh and use a profile that is made out of several curves, just like that. And uh, at the resolution determines how many strands each thread is made out of and uh, the radius can just determine the thickness. So with this, if we find a way of turning all of these into individual curves, we can also repeat the same process again and again uh, for any curve we want. So uh, let's say this has a radius like that and uh, Let's use fewer strands and maybe reduce the number of turns. If we wanted this to be another strand made out of several threads, other strands, we would have to reset up this same thing. But we need each strand to be made out of a curve like this for all these operations to work. And uh, the best way to do that is instead of making this profile out of these individual circles, we can make it out of a, a line curve, just like this, just like that. Now this is going to be extruded like this. And what this will help us do is each strand or each point we have here, because it's a curve, it has a starting point and an end point. So if we store that using a store named attributes, I call this endpoints and use the endpoint selection to create a selection of this. Actually, if I just preview this, you can see this is our line and this has to be here. And uh, we can set this to be a Boolean because we want to select just the endpoint. And uh, if we preview that, I want to select the, just the start, this point, this last point, you can see this is the first point. If I move this up a bit, you can see that only this point is selected and we are saving it into a named attribute called endpoints. So if we go to the instance level, you can see that we have those selected here. And I can even use a named attribute called endpoints. And you can see that uh, this selection is propagating through our node tree, even up to this level. Now, what I want is just the curves that make up these splines. And I can easily do that by using a delete node a delete node and only delete the endpoints. So now I have the curves that make up the springs. And now if I use an, uh, another curved mesh, uh, this uh, this is a mesh. So this, this is why this is giving us an error. So I can use a mesh to curve node. So now I can use another circle curve and basically have the same setup we had. But this time around, if I wanted, I can just copy all of this, all of this setup and essentially repeat it here. So what I've showed you are the building blocks of other threads. So if you turn that into a node group, you can duplicate it and just continuously create threads at different levels. The rest of the lecture is just cleaning up things 
and also just polishing out the generator to turn it into a procedure modifier that can turn any any curve into a rope made up of strands and threads. I'm always finding new topics that I can turn into lectures that I think you might find interesting. I'm working on this other lecture for creating TV-like motion graphics. So if you're interested in that, just make sure to check out the course and uh, let me know what you think.